Well, I've got a word from God. Say yay. Yay. Yes. Remember uh, last week we talked about decreeing a, a thing and having it be established. But we backed up in that scripture because that has been my mantra, decree a thing and it will be established. But we backed up because I've decreed a whole lot of things and nothing was established, if you could just be the most honest. And so the first thing that we saw was acquaint yourself with God, get to know God, have a relationship with God, understand that in in this dispensation and after Jesus came and left, the Holy Spirit came and lived on the inside of us. So we acquaint ourselves with that spirit that even lives on the inside of us. And it says, stay in peace. I'm just backing up to these scriptures starting in about verse 21. Acquaint yourself with God. Stay in peace. Receive the word, not just receive the word, not just show up and hear a good word or hear a good word on YouTube or what, however it is that you hear your word. We're talking about lay that word up in your heart. So you're meditating on it. You're thinking about it. You're relating it to others. You're memorizing that word. You're lifting your face to God. I'm on my way to decree a thing. No wonder there was many things that I decreed and they didn't happen. I didn't know there was some prerequisites to decree a thing. It says, lift your face unto God. Worship him no matter what. Make your prayer to him. Pay your vows, whatever, that, whatever those promises are to God that you have uh, made you pay your vows, then you'll also decree a thing and it will be established. So God brings us to this place every week to hear his word, but also to receive a call for us to rise up and rule. Rise up to a new place and a new position in him so that we can decree an overturning of every decree of the enemy. That's what we're finding out more and more and more, whether it's revealed through this man or revealed through this newscast or through this uh, truth or whatever it might be. We want to be get in a position in Christ where that we can rule and not be overrun with the fear that they use to operate in the earth to control us. So we want to get in that position where we can overturn that decree of the enemy. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to receive the call today to engage in active confrontation. And most people do not want to be in the middle of confrontation, do we? No, we don't. Uh, or to take action or somehow or another report for an assignment that we don't really want to be uh, a part of. And, and also last night when Deanne and I, we were, we were YouTubing all over the place and listening to, and so there was a flashpoint. And uh, so we were listening to a gentleman, here's what he says. Have you noticed when it looks impossible <laughs> that God steps in because his specialty is the impossible? His specialty is the impossible. There's just a whole lot of things when you look around and just forget about all the stuff that's going in your life that's impossible. Just look around you and there's so much that, well, I'll not live long enough to see that figured out. It just seems to be impossible. But, but let's think about Daniel. And he was thrown in the lion's den. And God showed up. Then the Hebrew boys, they're, they're thrown in the furnace and it's heated up seven times hotter and they come 
out of there. It was impossible. But there was a redemptive plan that God had from the very beginning. And then this uh, gentleman on Flashpoint went to Habakkuk. And I love this because there was a mess going on there. And he didn't say this, but I read it today, Deanne. And it says, Behold among the heathen, they are going to wonder marvelously. So in your face, enemy, in your face, devil, in your face, evil that's going on, in your face, all of these fear mongers, behold among the heathen who are going to wonder uh, marvelously, I, God is talking. I will do a work in your day that you won't even believe if I even told you. So I just took that for my very self. I'm going to do a work. I'm not going to do a work in a year. He said, I'm going to do a work in your day. In the, in fact, it says in the King James, in these days, right now, I'm going to do a work in these days that you won't even believe if I told you. Wow. Mm, that's the kind of God we're serving. Amen. So, I told Deanne a couple of weeks ago that I was going to, I was studying Psalm 23. And you know, Psalm 23 is, an, is a wonderful psalm, and you always hear it like at a funeral. Or, you know, Very the pastoral. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And uh, so, and we all know it, and we all know it uh, by memory. But here's what John, and I'm going to your favorite scripture, John 14, chapter 14, I think through 16. Anyway, Jesus is uh, about to go to the cross and so he's telling uh, his disciples some things and so I don't know exactly but it's in between John 14 and 16 Deanne probably knows exactly Jesus said listen I'm gonna I'm gonna be going away I'm gonna be going away and I'm gonna send you another paraclete it says in the King James and my father is going to send one just like me, but here's the deal. He's going to live on the inside of you. Yeah, that's amazing. So let's just say that. He lives on the inside of me. So I just thought, well, let me just look up that word paraclete. I mean, I've heard that word. I, I was raised in the Baptist church. I know all about the paraclete. I know all about the comforter. I think it says that in the King James. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go away, and my father is going to send you the comforter. That's why it's always wonderful to do at a funeral. And uh, so I'm going to send you another paraclete. So paraclete means comforter. Well, yeah. But it also means to support. It means a defense attorney. Yeah. It means helper. It means one who aids or intercedes, one who supports. But you, in these, in these Hebrew and Greek words, sometimes there are two parts to them. So paraclete is para and kleto or something like that. And so, para, okay, now he said, I'm going to go away. Jesus is there in the flesh. I'm going to go away, but my father is going to send you one just like me. And, but he's going to live inside you. And he's called the paraclete. Para means to, and this will make sense in just a minute, because we're going we're gonna to talk about something so huge just tell yourself, I'm so glad I came today. <laughs> I'm glad. Para means to end. It means to finish. It means to save from. Para cleat. To end, to finish, to save from. Cleat, cletos means the curse. Yeah. 
So the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to go away here in a little bit. I'm going to go away, but my father is going to send you one just like me. But he's going to live on the inside, and he's called the paraclete. So who lives on the inside of me? The one who lives on the inside of me is going to end something, going to finish something. He's inside to destroy, to save, to the end the effects of every curse going on in our life. Paraclete, Jesus said, I'm going to go away way but I'm going to put the curse destroyer on the inside of you I'm gonna put the yoke breaker on the inside of you and everywhere you go you'll destroy the curse you'll break the yoke and you'll turn everything that's upside down right side up shout I'm a curse destroyer Now preach that at somebody's funeral. He's a comforter. Well, but it just it comes to my mind, and I don't I think this is the Holy Spirit, that uh, the greatest travesty of the evangelical church, the Protestant church, is that it put off into the future every promise that Jesus gave in the gospels for the right present time. The moment we don't, we're putting something off. We're putting off that ruling and reigning. We're putting off the fact that that no longer the he says that the evil one cannot touch you. And we let we just talk about the devil like he has free reign. Well, the devil this, the devil that. Well, you know what? I don't talk about the devil so much anymore. Here's what I talk about. I and let me tell you what the battle is not out there. The battle is right in here, right in here, right in here, your mouth. And so let us not, let's lay hold. Let's lay hold of what has been given by the Lord Jesus. Let's lay hold of what has been given and placed on the inside of us called the Holy Spirit, the one who rules and reigns in life through us. So right now, I take authority over that cessation thing. I take authority over every doctrine of devils that limits and hinders the free flow of ruling and reigning in your life. I said you were created, you were chosen by God from before the foundation of the world to live after the cross. If you live after the cross... You live in the fullness of the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're stirred up today. So in Numbers 23, say there's a curse destroyer on the inside yeah. of me. So Numbers 23, you may, you may be familiar with this story, but there was a wicked king. His name is Balak. Say Balak. Balak. And that name means destroyer. So there are some out there that wish to destroy. Oh, yeah. So there's a wicked king. His name is Balak. And he hired, of all things, Deanne, a prophet. He hired a prophet, Balaam, and he hired him to curse Israel. And Balaam said, listen, I can't curse him. Now listen to this. And I got this, not out of the King James, but out of another translation. Balaam says, listen, Balak, and he's the king. He said, I, I can't curse them because the shout of the king is in their midst. I can't, I can't curse them. The shout of the king is in their midst. Remember what? David said, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. I can't curse what God has blessed. That's what it says in the yeah. King James. Yeah. So here we are in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit is inside us and can release in necessary situations a curse-destroying decree and a shout coming out of our mouth. It seems to me in this interesting 
swirl that we're in right now, that there is a call to rise up to a new place in Christ to begin to decree the overturning of every curse of the enemy. Yeah. And I named off several yeah. last week. I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to name them. So there is a call then to confrontation. There is a demand for a group of people to fight against the enemy, which is many times the information that we need coming through a voice that Deanne has become aware of so that we can be informed and have the information that we need to fight this battle. And so it's like David's, is there not a cause? Yes, there is a cause. There is a cause. There is a cause. Like Deborah who said, you know what? We have been in bondage and oppressed for 20 years. And now she's a woman, she is a judge, she is a prophet. She rises up, women don't do that then. She rises up and says, we're going to war, we're going to fight, and we're going to win. Now that's Old Testament, but in the New Testament, the curse breaker, the curse destroyer lives on the inside of us. So I said all that to get to Psalm 23. In it are the keys to deliverance, breakthrough, and victory over our enemies. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So I'm going to go back over to John. I'm going to go between Psalm 23 and John. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In John 10, Jesus says he's the good shepherd. You know why he says the good shepherd? Because he says, let, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm the good shepherd. I'm going to take good care of you because there's a thief and he's going to come. And let me tell you what the thief does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the good shepherd comes to give life and life more abundantly. Abundant life is like superior in quality. It's like just go ahead and be happy now. Exceeding above and beyond. It says more abundantly. More and more and more and more abundantly. The Lord is my good shepherd. I shall not want. You look up that word want in the Strong's Concordance and it says I shall not lack. I shall not have a need. I shall not do without. I shall not decrease. I shall not fail. I shall not be grieved. I shall not be anxious. I shall not be overwhelmed. I will not be taken advantage of any more. Yes. The Lord is my good shepherd. I shall not want. So let's say that together. I shall not lack. I shall not have a need. I shall not do without. I shall not decrease. I shall not fail. I shall not be overwhelmed. I shall not be anxious. I shall not be taken advantage of. So how? Is <laughs> how is that really going to happen? You know, there's, there's just such amazing scriptures. Greater is he that's within me than he's in the world. Yeah, really. Okay, how does, how does it really work? I can spout off, uh, I, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way, but how does it? It doesn't look like I'm so great. It doesn't look like the good, the good things are, you know what, you get it? How's it really going to happen? So I'm going to go back to John. Dan, you will love this. All right, here's what he said. I'm the good shepherd. There's, there's, gonna, there's an enemy, no doubt about it. My sheep, so if he's the good shepherd, then I am the good sheep. 
My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my word. And let me just say this. Whatever the crisis is, whatever the fear is, whatever you're anxious over, whatever you're disappointed about, whatever is revealed, and oh my gosh, I've been living in this for 20 years. How in the world did I do? It's probably my fault. On and on and on. Whatever the crisis, the word is the answer. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my word. I know them and they follow me. They follow the word. The operative word is voice. Psalm 29 says this. The voice of the Lord is powerful. So you look up that word powerful and you find out that it means the voice of the Lord is a force that gets things out of the way. The voice of the Lord is full of glory. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is a force. A breakthrough comes because of the force of the Lord, because of the word of God. Here's what Isaiah 30 says. The voice of the Lord shatters the enemy. Breaks cedars, divides flames of fire, shakes the wilderness. That's all King James Version. Here's the modern version. The voice of the Lord knocks heads. The voice of the Lord puts fear on the enemy. The voice of the Lord strips and exposes evil workers. And I want to prophesy right now, this next two weeks coming up, there is going to be so much exposure of all of the evil tactics, of all of these evil organizations that it is going to be mind-blowing for some that have no idea what is going on. Strips and expose The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is a force that strips and exposes the evil workers. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So let's just... Let me just say it like this. One word from that shepherd. And the defeat gets started. So I would, this has been several weeks ago, but I was listening to a minister, kind of like uh, Randy Clark, listening to a minister and they told told this story. Say say one word. (laughs) Can change everything. everything. So this minister, the uh, he told a story of, of being in a, in a place to preach, and he, there was a young woman, and Deanne and I have, have seen this very woman, sitting on the front row. In fact, there were several Deanne that were there, and they were all goth. So they were black from head to toe. Remember that at that church in Wichita Falls? Black from head to t- this one girl in this congregation where he was preaching. And uh, so he got kind of to the end of the... So all of a sudden he was calling out uh, like words of knowledge and, and people were getting healed and, 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 you know, falling out and just praising the Lord and the crowd was going crazy and just, it, it was just one of those... And he would catch a look at her because she was obvious. She's dressed in black. It's all black. She's goth. And when something would happen, she would just roll her eyes back like, Ugh, yeah, what's that? So finally, the question went to her. Well, could I pray for you? So she gets up and goes to the front, puts her hands on her hips, as if to say, what you got? And 
this minister said one word. The Lord has not forgotten. I have not forgotten you. The Lord has not forgot. The young girl fell to the floor sobbing, crying. Listen, the voice of the Lord is a force that begins the defeat. So this girl is sobbing. All, all he said was, God, God has not forgotten you. He's not forgot. And so when she finally gains her composure, she rolled up her sleeve. And she says, with a knife, she carved the letters forgotten on her arm. And so she said, I thought that God had forgotten me. I had prayed and nothing happened. And suffice it to say, she got saved, delivered, filled with the Spirit that day because of one word, forgotten. The Lord is my shepherd. I hear his voice. And I shall not want. So when we come in a place like this, yes, he can be your shepherd. But you have to actively get everything else out of your conversation that you're having on the inside. And hear, the Lord is my shepherd. I hear his voice. And I shall not want. One word from God can change everything. It is a force that breaks down every other power. The voice of the Lord is a force. If we don't get anything else today, let's get that. The voice of the Lord is a force. And then it goes on to say, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. That is such a, 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 play, a, a peaceful way to verbalize what what is what is happening next and then he says that he restores my soul say to yourself this is no time to be exhausted it just seems that people are tired people are exhausted restore there means to refresh to rescue to repair. It's just no time to be tired and exhausted, but it also means to resurrect or resurrection, whatever is dead. And sometimes when you've been hanging in there for as long as some of you I know have been, and fighting and believing and learning and trusting and praying and fasting and, and sacrificing and all the things that we do, he restores our soul. There is a resurrection, something that we thought maybe was even dead. I just don't, I just don't feel the same way. It feels dead on the inside. I can't find it. He restores, he restores, the good shepherd. So on the third Sandy, day. Sandy, <clears throat> Sandy alluded to this last week, but I've had this bizarre, acute case of restless leg syndrome, never had it before, don't know what caused it, just showed up in my life. Well, what happens is, is that you can't sleep because your legs are twitching and jerking weirdness, you can't get comfortable, you're rolling around. And so what would happen is I might go to sleep and then I would wake up and I would twitch and jerk and then pretty soon I thought I'm gonna, you know, I did everything and it went on for about five weeks or maybe more. But anyway, I, I tried everything. I got up, I walked around, I sat in the chair, I got a heating pad out. I 
whatever I, I did, I did everything I could do. But then the point of it is, is when you don't sleep, when you do go back to sleep, it's so good. So some of my best sleep was maybe like from 4 to 8 in the morning. If you get up at 8 o'clock in Kansas in June, guess what happens? It's already getting hot. So you've lost that cool morning time if you want to go for a walk or whatever. And so anyway, and I, I just can't, I was... I was weary. I was tired. I thought, Lord Jesus, what would happen to me if I had really had a problem? So I realized that I, and Catherine Watsy says the darndest things. I don't even, I, this didn't even have anything to do with any, any of that. But it comes to my mind, thank you for the comforter. She, I heard her voice. She said, just hear God and do that. Yeah. Well, how can you hear God? You can't even, you're, you're tired. Hear God? What do you mean hear God? I, I have trouble hearing God when I am full of faith and moving and whatever. <laughs> anyway, I had none of that. I was drained out, wasn't I? I mean, and I was mad. I was mad for about five weeks. All right. And I had some things to be mad about, too. And I took it, and I was. But... When I, that came to my mind, I heard him, I, I heard him give me an idea. He said, set your alarm for 7 o'clock. If you don't sleep one hour, that alarm's going to go off and you're going to get up. And I did that. So the alarm is set every day. Well, what happens when the alarm is set? You get up, you wake up before the alarm, right? Anyway, so I just want to tell you that that one word, get up and set the, set the alarm and get up, changed my whole life. Got up, had my coffee, it's cool, went for a walk and prayed in tongues. Went for a walk and prayed in tongues. And I, if I'm walking really good, I mean, I can't, I don't talk out my mouth. I pray, I pray in tongues inside. So I walked and prayed in tongues and walked and prayed in tongues and came back, sat down in my chair because for people like me, walking and praying in tongues is not the key. It's sitting down. Sit your flesh down. And so one day I'm thinking, well, I've already prayed now, you know, and I got some stuff to do. And besides all that, what happens is you think about the laundry, you think about the mail, you think about the thank you note, you think about everything. And he said, Deanne, sit down because while you're praying in tongues, and I had to set the alarm on my phone for 30 minutes. Now I'm talking, uh, I'm talking about how to hear God and get in victory, how to hear God and become in peace and rest. And so he said, Deanne, don't, don't be, don't belittle this 30 minutes that you have praying. In the, I'm not reading my Bible. I'm shut up, sit down in the chair, and I'm praying in tongues, 30 minutes. He said, this is an investment in your future. And I want to tell you some amazing things began to happen because the Holy Spirit prays through you for things that you don't even know that you need to have prayer for. And you're praying the perfect will of God. Yeah. Just the addendum to this. And then because I'm saying the Lord is our good shepherd, but we live on the other side of the cross. Do you want to be led by still waters? Do you want the, your soul to be restful? Do you? I do. And that is what I, when Sandy said, well, I'm gonna, I've been reading the Psalms 23. Listen, I'm living Psalms 23 by I, because I heard from God and I did that. Hear from God and do that. So anyway, hear from God and do that. Pray in tongues. Sit there. Sit there, Deanne. Don't get up. Don't even check your watch. Oh, I have to check my watch because I haven't done that. I haven't had this discipline for a while. You don't have to do this the rest of your life, but if he says sit down and pray, and if he says set, shut, you should do that. So I did that. I'm telling you, hear God and do it. So, guess I'm doing my laundry. I bet that I have washed five Kleenexes in my laundry in the past three months. So at any rate, now, if you know, I check every pocket. 
when I put my laundry in. And there is nothing more aggravating than washing a load of dark things and have a Kleenex in your pocket. Get into the laundry. So I'm getting ready the other morning, and I'm getting, after I do my, hear God and do that, because that's all I'm saying. I just want to hear God and do that. So I, I don't think it gets much simpler than that, but it requires faith and requires the right. discipline of sitting and listening So, to get, to get you tuned up. So anyway, I'm putting the laundry in. I've got the laundry in. I'm ready to put the soap in, ready to put the lid down. And he says, you need to check your apron for a Kleenex. Stuck my hand down in that pocket in the front of that apron. Nothing. Kleenex. And he said, I told you that when you pray in the spirit, you're investing in your future. And I got that frustration removed from my life that disrupted my peace because you'd have to take every piece of laundry out and you would have to shake it out first in the driveway, in the backyard, if it's windy. And then it gets all over. And then you have to pick it off. Then you have to put it in your dryer. Then you have to clean out. Listen, I'm telling you that when we're led by peaceful waters, it may not be that your bank account is full. It may not be that you were healed from some terrible disease. It could be that you are healed from restless leg syndrome, which I, I have had weeks, a week of no jumping around at night, and I am up, and I am walking, and I am praying in tongues, and I don't have any Kleenexes stuck in my wash machine. So let's get, let's think about the practical connections between Psalms 23. We don't have to have it read at a funeral. We can live it in the now. Well, it would be a funeral of the uh, no Kleenex in the washing machine. Well, I there, just... we're not going to do it again. All right, let me go on. Restored means resurrection. And so we know what happened on the third day. There was the resurrection of Jesus. But did you realize, I didn't realize it until I'm studying this in Psalm 23, that there is a pattern. And the pattern was this. On the third day, God came down to Abraham and Isaac on Mount Moriah and said, don't do that. There was another time on the third day that God came down and he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. There was another incident that on the third day, you remember in, uh, uh, in Kings, I think it was, on the third day, David got overwhelmed. And the reason that he was overwhelmed with grief at Ziklag is because while he was gone, the enemy came in and stole everything, including his family. And on the third day of that brief encounter with grief, God said, I want you to pursue, I want you to overtake and I want you to recover all, and he did. So I just want to say that right now there's a third day anointing to get over the weariness, to get over the death of a hope, to get over sickness, to get over Kleenex in the thing, to get over poverty, to get over disappointment, to get over anxiety, to get over discouragement, to get over, I'm just tired. There's a Psalm 23 deliverance and breaker anointing to pursue, overtake, and recover all. And God says, Sandy, I'm up to something. I hang on, hang on. I'm up to something. He said, I heard you every time you prayed for years. I heard you. I heard you every time you gave. I heard you every time you cried. I heard you every time you gave up. I heard you every time you came back. I heard you. I'm up to something. So just lift your hands right now, and I want to say I want to break off the assignment of weariness and discouragement and fear, and I want to release over us all a supernatural energy and strength and revelation and wisdom and strategies, and I want to say to God, we believe what we believe. 
we believe. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me and your rod and your staff that you used all the way through the word, it comforts me. Amen, amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So the Holy Spirit says, when the enemy is all around you, don't forget the table. You prepare. God says, in this psalm, you prepare. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of the enemy. Now, all the time that I have ever read this, I thought the table meant that our good shepherd was going to prepare a statesman meal in front of the enemies. And I would just say, take that devil while I have a wonderful lunch. I don't really know what it meant, except that he was going to prepare something for me. He was going to prepare something for me, even in the presence of my, his enemies. So I looked up that Hebrew word table and it does not refer to a table in fact in their culture and their time they did not eat at tables they ate on the floor they didn't have such a thing in that culture only maybe in the um, the palaces was there a, a table so, but in this particular portion, I'm going to prepare a table for you in the presence of my enemies. So I looked it up. And so it does not refer to a table that you would eat food on. As a verb, it suggests to forcibly remove someone. You know the phrase, let's just table this discussion. I'm done. You're out. It's a legislative negotiating term. So as a verb, it means to forcibly remove someone. And as a noun, it, it suggests like throwing a spear, which is the same thing. The idea of sending away is like you throw a spear and you're sending it away. So the example is we're going to table this. this I'm done. You're out. I'm forcibly getting rid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare a table. And the enemy is going to know exactly what's next. He's forcibly, this is a legislative negotiating term. I am going to prepare a table before you, before the enemies, my, my enemies. So here's what our good shepherd, I kind of like that. So I'm just kind of adding Psalm 23 and John 14. I'm the good shepherd. So our good shepherd is saying, and here's what the commentary said. I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of my enemies. The commentary said, I'm going to give you everything that you need to be respected and victorious in the face of my enemies. I'm going to prepare that table. I'm going to prepare that bit of negotiating. I'm going to prepare that legislation. And you're going to get the respect that is due you. And you're going to be victorious in the face of your enemies. So it's just kind of a new thought on that table. Don't forget the table. And then he goes on to say, you anoint my head with oil and my cup run is over. And then we love it. Surely. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So just remember today, the Lord says, I'm up to something. I'm up to something. God needs us. Deanne said it. God needs us to run things for him down here. He's not here. But you know what I'm saying. 
He needs us to run things for him down here. Authority and anointing are being produced as we receive, as we hear the word, as the end says, as you set your alarm, you get up, you pray in tongues, you get done what you need to do. We are, that anointing and that authority is being produced in us and we are no longer moved by physical or demonic evidence. Amen. And there's plenty of that out there. Yeah. The revelation that we have received last week and this week will be part of the solution to everything that is holding us back. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to make that statement. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to believe that statement. So let's stand to our feet. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that we have heard your voice and your voice is a force. And that force is being used against all of your enemies. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came, you lived on, you live on the inside of us. You are the paraclete. You are the breaker anointing. You are the curse destroyer. You live on the inside of us. And as we speak and we become your voice in the earth, it is shattering all the plans and the lies and the darkness of the enemy. And we thank you, God, and we live in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.